Hey, Viv with Art with Viv here. Today we're going to paint a sweet summer puppy with some flowers with watercolor. Come on. Now the first thing I always like to do after I've sketched my puppy and my flowers in is if I'm doing an animal or a person, I like to just paint in the eyes first. It sort of grounds me and gives me something to look at. This puppy, I'm just using a little bit of Payne's Gray mixed with just a little bit of Indigo Blue. And I'm being careful to leave the white of the paper as the highlight. And I'm taking that same color and just painting the first layer of his nose in. Then I'm going to go ahead, take some yellow ochre, a little um, darker brown as well. And I'm just going to start painting in his little legs and in his body. And I'm just blending it with some clear water. And wherever I want it darker, I'm either adding a little more paint with less water or I'm taking the actual darker brown and putting that in there for some shadows. And that's how I am going to go around the whole body doing this. I'm going to pay attention to his wrinkles and his rolls and his little fat tummy and get all of those little rolls and wrinkles in there. And the way that I'm doing that is just by shadowing. It's always best whenever you're painting anything to pay attention to where your light source is coming from, where your highlights are, and where your shadows are. That's what actually gives it your three-dimensional look and gives it some form is how the light is going across the body. Now, I chose to do this sweet little summer puppy. I gave my um, art school, my private art school, Viv Studio, I gave them a little prompt this or a little challenge this month to paint something that they loved. And it could be anything, but it had to be something that they loved and it had to represent summer for them. And so I chose to do this little puppy because I used to have this bulldog. Well, I still have some bulldogs, but this particular bulldog, her name was Lindsay. She followed me everywhere. And when I would work in the garden, she would come along behind me and it never failed if she found a flower she would stop and sniff that flower she loved flowers so this little puppy it just sort of represents her it represents our summers in the garden and that's why this one's meaningful to me and this is what i chose to paint for our prompt in our uh viv studio our online school so that's why it's a bulldog smelling flowers in honor of my little Lindsay. Now, again, I'm just continuing. You see where I've done that tummy there, and I've let the highlight show, added a darker brown. I believe I've got some sepia in there, maybe even some burnt umber, along with yellow ochre and some burnt sienna, some of those really pretty browns and earth tones. And I'm just painting in where I see the lights and shadows and the different colors on the puppy. And in some spots, I am letting the water do the work. If While it's still wet, I'm just dropping in some of that shadow, some of those darker colors for the shadow. Getting his little wrinkly, his little wrinkly legs in there. Him's got little rolls of fat on his legs. Yes, he does. And much like my Lindsay, she also was fat she was probably the fattest dog i ever had nothing but wrinkles and rolls so i'm gonna let you watch as i just keep building up the layers building up the colors and the shadows on the puppy let you enjoy a little bit of music and i'll come back in a second when we start something new
a little pink around his eye. It's just sort of a rose color, but very watered down around his eye, on the tip of his nose, and underneath his little chest wrinkle. And that's where uh, sometimes bulldogs, if they have white fur and their skin is pink, it'll kind of shine through, shine through that fur. So I put that in there, wetting it down, just sort of blending it out with my brush. And I am using right there, I'm using a number, uh, a size four round and just blending it out. These are some of my favorite brushes. They are um, Mimic, Creative Mark from Mimic brushes, watercolor brushes. I mean, they're from Creative Mark. They're, named, they're called Mimic and they are faux squirrel watercolor brushes. So I'm working on that nose. I'm adding some shadows in there. I've also added a little bit more details around his eyes. I'm wetting his little jowl, the front of his lip with a little bit of water. And then just taking some of the brown and coming in and putting the shadow in. You wanna just pay attention to where your wrinkles are and how they're casting shadows across his little face. And I'm also pushing up just his, this forehead is white, but it has just a little bit of reflection from the flower and from the rest of his brown that's on either side of his face. So I just put a really watered down bit of a yellow right across his forehead. And I'm just going ahead and I've, I've added some dots on his little snout there that represents his little where his little whiskers are coming out, putting in the shadows around his little nose and jowls and eyes. And I'm just taking a hog bristle brush and sort of blending out. I got some color in a place I didn't want it. And then I'm just going to continue to deepen some of those shadows and work on his little toes. I'm paying attention to where the shadows are, what shapes they are in between his little toes. They're actually sort of spread out from the pressure of his weight on the, fl on the floor. And just adding a few more little wrinkles going down his feet. Adding a little bit more pink because his pink is showing, his pink skin is showing through his white fur. And we're just building up layers and continuing to work on those toes, getting in those shadows. I'll let you watch and I'll be back in just a little bit. Let you enjoy just a little bit of music. this dry on the bulldog I'm just putting in a few more little shadows and sort of blending some things in I'm gonna go ahead and start doing the first layer of the flowers and I'm just using a very watery mixture of I think that's an opera pink now do know that opera pink can be fugitive which means it will fade in sunlight or you know it fades over time so if this is an artwork that you want to keep use a permanent rose instead of the uh, opera pink so just to let you know that um, this is I'm not intending on keeping this forever this was just sort of to give give my class 
my students just an idea of how to paint this. I'm going to put it on my blog for them and make sure that they see it so that they can watch it and maybe it'll help them get some ideas about what they want to paint. So I'm just putting in those first layers in some areas. I'm adding a little bit more of the pink to make it look like some shadows. I'm coming in with a nice sort of magenta and painting in the petals of this flower here. And I'm just gonna work my way around the flowers with the different shades of pink and purples until I get it like I want it. You also see, I forgot to mention that I did go ahead and put in some yellow for the centers of some of the flowers. I've added some of that yellow to that rose and a little bit um, of a darker red just in some some of the flowers because some of the flowers are a different shade of pink or have a little bit more red in them. So I'm looking at my reference photo and just trying to get some of those colors, those different colors in there as I work. And I'm going to continue to do this and let you watch and then enjoy some music. Once I, so I get in sort of those base colors, and I've also used a little bit of green to put in the um, foliage, a little foliage in the, some of the stems, I'm just going to use a really watered down version of the same color I used for the puppy and put that as a base for our little basket that the flowers are in. And I'm going to add a little bit more green up here, a few more leaves here and there. I'm not trying to get too detailed with it. It's you know, I want my focus to stay as much on the puppy as possible, so I'm not adding too many really fine details. Um, I am coming back, adding some shadow work in those flowers. I'm trying to let that basket dry, um, but it's then come back and just sort of add the weave. And the way that we're going to add the weave is just to add some shadow work across the basket. 
Now as you see here, I'm adding some of the deeper shadows into the flowers and that's making them look a little bit more three-dimensional and giving them some shape. And as always, my sweet little dove, Dorian Gray, is cheering us on in the background. He is just cooing away. So he wants you to do a good job with this painting and he is letting you know that he has your back, that he is here for you. So <laughs> he is a loud little bird. Now I had a little bit too much paint on some of these, so I'm just taking my hog bristle brush. It's a flat, small hog bristle brush and just um, lifting up some of that paint and now I'm just adding a different color there and just letting that sort of blend in and then we are going to let some of that dry as I'm letting some of that dry I'm gonna go ahead and start adding some white and this is just the bleed proof white Dr. PH Martin's bleed proof white I'm adding some sort of little tiny marks to indicate hairs. I've added the highlight to his nose and to his eyes. And I'm also just sort of adding a little bit of fur and just fur marks, little tiny marks to indicate fur around his paws. Where his fur changes colors from white to brown, I'm adding a little bit around there. And it's very subtle, but it, it actually adds a lot to the painting. And now I'm just adding some of his little whiskers across his little pink, his little pink snout and getting some of that in there. And I'm also going to use the white to sort of highlight some of the edges of the flowers and make sure that some of the lighter areas on the puppy are really distinct so that you can see them. And just um, making sure that I don't have a lot of hard edges without some little tiny fur marks. If you look really closely at this, you'll see them and it makes a big difference. Now from this, from the camera here, you may not be able to see them as well, but trust me when I say it makes a big difference to have some of those little tiny hairs, you know, where that you can actually see them against the darker fur and where all of the little uh, changes in colors of the puppy where they have a little transition, you put some of those little fur marks and it's perfect. So now I've let that um, first layer on the basket dry completely and I'm just coming in with a darker brown. I'm using a neg sort of a negative painting technique whereas I'm actually painting the shadows of those strips and where they're woven together rather than the actual strips and painting around those strips brings them forward with that. If you paint around with that dark color it'll bring those strips forward so what I'm doing is just paying close attention 
to the um, reference photo. I'm not trying to get too, too many details in here, but enough that you can tell that it is a woven basket that these flowers are in. So this is when um, that negative painting technique can come in handy. You just start painting around those little strips, painting the actual shadows and your strips sort of come to life like that. So I've dabbed a little too much. I'm just adding a few little shadows and there you have it it is a beautiful basket with a sweet little summer puppy sniffing some flowers so if you've enjoyed this please share it with a friend that you think might enjoy it and don't forget to hit that subscribe button hit the bell for a notification so that you don't miss a video thank you for watching i appreciate it so much